When you wake up in bed, lift your head up, and that's what you see, you know it's gonna be a good day. <laughs> um, I woke up to an email from my assistant, and that's usually what I do in the morning. I get up, because my phone is attached right here to this little, uh, this little steely mount thing, this little, yeah. So when I get up in the morning, that's usually what I do is I grab my phone and uh, I go through emails and just stuff, just kind of getting my, getting my day started. So I woke up to an email from my assistant this morning and the email said, I thought I would share it with you. The email said, hey Chrome, since you aren't using your growing email list, it's easy to forget about it. You currently have 1,941 emails collected. It's your best protection against Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube getting impacted and being able to connect with your audience or reconnect with your audience. Maybe in a future video, you could mention that you have this backup system to keep your community together. You know, I never, I never understood uh, email lists or anything like that. I never understood, but when she worded it that way, it 100% made sense. So if you guys really enjoy what we do here on Van City Van Life and you guys want to kind of just keep a long-term connection with us, that's exactly what that email list is going to be for, is for big announcements. We've had the website since June of last year. <laughs> we still haven't sent an email out on it. So if you guys want to be a part of our backup system, which I would highly appreciate, um, because yeah, you never know. What if YouTube goes tomorrow? How do I get a hold of you guys? Where'd you guys go? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't want you guys to wonder where did Chrome go. So, um, my, for my assistant, thank you very much for that because you're right. Things like that are very easy to forget. Anyway, you guys, welcome to today's video. We're still in Nanaimo, BC. That's the view from the side of my van and, um, that ambulance from yesterday still beside me woke up this morning looking at my phone looking at the footage of that ambulance going huh that's a pretty that'd be a really rad project if i bought it where would i put it where would i do the work on it see that's a big problem in van life i don't have a home a shop anything like that so i don't have a place to just buy another rig and build it out how would I go about doing that if I ever decided I want to build out another rig? Anyway, <laughs> let's go get a morning coffee. Welcome, welcome to, welcome to that. I'm borrowing, why, why is that a weird word to say? Borrowing, borrow, borrowing. Mine's too early. I'm at J5 Custom Vans waiting for my lift kit to come in. And since I'm just sitting here waiting to help them offload it off the truck, fingers crossed it's coming in today, I'm taking this time to clean my van up. Just threw my bed on the roof, let the UV, what's wrong with my mouth today? Let the UV rays hit it and uh, yeah, just do a little bit of an organization day. This is not gonna be fun. Oh yeah, look at lunch. Looks good, I and mean, look who's coming. Go figure. <laughs> this thing you guys see here covering my whole bed, that's that hypervent stuff. It's pretty simple. It's just a thin material on one side and a hard plastic on this side. Looks like a really loosely wound scotch bray pad. Literally, that's, that's all it looks like. And believe it or not, you guys, it works. Full blown has worked for me. I've had no moisture problems underneath my bed since this thing was put on there. It's not cheap, but worth it. Having the cooler mounted on the same platform that the bed is on allows for like easy moving around if you need to clean things. Cause I can lift this one backwards onto the bed and clean it underneath it. That's disgusting. That's all nice and clean. And this stuff was so easy to install. You literally cut it to size. And boom. You're in there. 
Over here in the corner is a summer essential inside of my van. I don't think my van life would be the same if it wasn't for this thing. It's the Caframo, oh, Caframo Sirocco 2 Elite fan and it's dirty. Very, very dirty. This is one product I would recommend to absolutely everybody getting into van life is one of these, they're Canadian made in Ontario, the Sirocco 2 fans. You can either buy the Sirocco 2 Elite, which is the brushless one. Um, it's gonna be a bit more expensive, or you can just buy the Sirocco 2. I don't know if they still make them anymore, but the amazing part about these is when you don't need it, you pull the lever and you can keep it completely out of the way. Let me shut the fan off. <laughs> so when you don't need it, it tucks away completely flat against the wall. And then when you do need it, pull the latch, lift it up to your desired height, and you can rotate this bad boy 360 degrees in pretty much every angle you could imagine. I keep this open at all times, up super high so it's out of the way from my bed. That way, anytime I do need to use it at night, all I gotta do is reach over and turn it on or off. Another thumbs up. My fan is something that we don't talk about very often, even though it is a vital part of my van life. And that's probably one of my favorite things in here. I maybe have five or 10 items in here that are my absolute favorite and I couldn't live without. And that is definitely one of them, but it's way back there. So <laughs> we never see it on the daily uh, in my videos. Uh, the links to those are on our website at vancityvanlife.ca. Some other things you don't see are right here on my side of the bed is my control center for my solar, uh, my inverter, and also my heater. If you guys have an inverter in your van, a lot of inverters come with an external switch. It's a good idea to keep it off when you're not using the inverter. Because if I need to plug in something that requires a wall plug, I turn it on and then I plug my devices in, um, like my power bar back here that I plug my laptop and stuff like that into when I need to charge it. When you're done with it, always shut it off because your inverter itself draws power. And over here is my control center for my Wabasto gasoline heater. It's awesome here because at night, reach up in the morning, push the buttons and turn my heater on and we're good to go. This here is my Renogy solar charge controller. It kind of monitors my entire battery system. I like this thing. On this nice sunny day, we're getting zero solar because my mattress is <laughs> over top of my solar panels right now. So we're getting zero solar input. But yeah, back here is kind of like my all in all things I didn't want to be put out here anywhere. And um, I don't have a link for these. I bought this from Ray Outfitted when I was out there in the summer. It's my nightlight. You just push the button and you got a nightlight. And it's great because I have, um, it's got a USB on the side so I can charge my cell phone and stuff, which I keep mounted right here. Plug it into the bottom. We're good to go all night. And of course, my power bar, which that power bar, this one goes out and runs to those speakers and also to um, a pre-wired up plug for my laptop so I don't have that big laptop power box here. I just have this cable here ready to go at all times. But that's all powered um, on the inverter here. So on and keep it off when you're not using it. Oh my gosh. Uh, when I show stuff like this on camera, it makes me feel like a slob. But my van life, and what I find sometimes is when I'm in the backcountry, I let things go. When I'm in the city, I have a tendency of keeping things a little cleaner. But when I'm out in the bush, ah, I just don't care, man. I just use my stuff and deal with it at a later date. 
It'd probably be a lot less work if I just did this on the regular. Stove looks so good. I haven't seen it this nice and clean in a long time. <laughs> Doing these deep cleans once in a while feels really good. Another hidden thing, if you've seen it in a video the other day, is my mirror. I put a strip of hockey tape along the top, that's my hinge, and just a little piece of Velcro on the bottom, a little hockey tape and Velcro, and that's my mirror. So if I ever need to use a mirror, I pop that down, bang. A little piece of plexiglass, it's from Ikea. Boom. <laughs> I love the little hidden gems in here. I'm gonna take apart the roof rack here and mount the new shovel we got. The key just turns this, end cap pops off, rubber thing comes up and then we can slide new things on here. Okay. So on the bottom here, it's got a little piece that slides inside the track. And that's it, man. We screw that on and we have a ladder holder. See how that one is pointed out? I think I'm going to point this one inwards. I don't know if it's going to, we're pretty sure it's the same. The holes just won't be 100% lined up. But I'll give it a shot because I think doing it this way is going to get in the way if I want to lean in and grab anything out of my rooftop carrier if this is pointed right at me. I'll give it a shot. And the shovel just feeds right through the end. Well, that's going to work out great. I'm so excited for this. That is rock solid. Shovel mounted up here to the top. So perfect having that up there. Looks good, nice and sleek. It's not gonna get in the way when I'm using the ladder. Easy access. This one's got a lock on the top. Just gotta turn the key and then you can unlock it. I'm pretty sure if I'm in the van at night and someone climbs up my ladder and tries to take it, they're gonna get a rude awakening from me. <laughs> but having that on the roof now has allowed me to take this smaller little shovel um, that I picked up at the beginning of my van life and um, maybe donate it to somebody, but um, that makes more room in my rooftop carrier. And having the larger shovel is gonna allow me to get a bit more leverage than using this short little stocky one. The older you get, the more you need things that are proper sized and less hunching over. Because one of those days I'm going to be un unsticking myself from, from a situation out in the mud. And then I'm going to pull my back because I have gear that's small. So I felt good about picking that one up. But I've really enjoyed having the Rhino Rack system. They make multiple different systems for different vehicles. But this one has been a collage of a bunch of different ones. They're really, really cool. Let me see if John wants a shovel. Now this thing. Boom. Here's the front winch that's going into my van. Hopefully this project will fit and go kind of smoothly. Uh, John's gonna have to finesse it because we're gonna try and tuck it uh, behind the front bumper. So it's probably gonna be a bit challenging for him. Uh, sorry, John. <laughs> and this is a recovery kit, a Smitty built recovery kit with like all the D-rings and things that I'm gonna need to help get myself unstuck. Plus I have a front tow hook just in case it's needed. Over here is the front tow hitch. Um, I got all of this stuff from hitchweb.com. This is gonna be where the winch gets mounted to. Um, this will all make sense once we get installing it. And yeah, cause I, I don't even know what's happening. All I just know is that John's gonna work his magic and get all of this stuff uh, squeezed in there. And over here sitting in the middle of the shop, is the rear end that's going into my van. So this is out of a Ford F350. So it's a one ton rear end versus the three quarter ton that I have. So it'll be stronger, more durable, bigger brakes. What do you guys say? I trailer around one of these things instead of a quad. <laughs> this thing is insane. If I want to trailer something behind my van, I was thinking a quad might be kind of fun. And then, you know, John builds those things and he competes and rocks and crawls on rocks and stuff. And <laughs> could you imagine that thing? Ah, it'd be so fun. Oh, my van 
is partially clean anyway. <laughs> I haven't used these blankets in a long time because I've been spending so much time out in the backcountry uh, having white <laughs> on the bed just not a good idea at all because Mr. Cruz comes in, he jumps in bed, enjoys a nap after a long day, and all goes that backcountry mud all over the bed. But since we're back, we're back in back in the city for a, for a tiny bit, I figured I'd put the nice bright white ones on here, mainly because mainly because my other ones were dirty, and I don't feel like doing laundry today. how fresh and clean that is oh my gosh I totally miss having the white oh. All right. all this excitement with cleaning my van I forgot to edit and upload, edit and upload a video we gotta do that I went to go shut the door and I bonked my head on this thing. <laughs> I reached out to grab the door and I'm like, bang, ow! <laughs> At uh, John's place tonight, they had a campfire, so I just smell like a campfire. Oh, I own ourselves a little shower <laughs> with a towel. I could have went to the gym. There's an anytime fitness about a two minute drive from me, but I don't feel like going in and having a shower. Oh. Well, so if you guys are wondering, my lift kit didn't show up today. Um, the lady on the phone said it was on the truck, should be delivered today. Keyword was should, um, it wasn't. I'm going to give them a call again tomorrow. Uh, the problem right now is that the lift kit was shipped from California, then it changed to a different shipping company when it crossed the border and cleared customs. Now it's with another shipping company being delivered here. So along the way, we've lost the ability to completely track every movement of the package. Um, but I'm going to give them a call tomorrow and see where it's at. I just don't want to get my freshly washed bedding <laughs> all dirty. And everything's clean on the bed. Everything from the pillows to the fitted sheet to the blanket which is going to bake for a super nice and cozy sleep tonight. You guys love that when you like sleep on fresh washed linens. It's like you get into bed, you're like, ah, so good. It was nice to give this van a complete wash down and overhaul. There's a few more things I want to do tomorrow. And that is wash my ceiling on the inside, which I never got around to doing today and to clean out the inside of all of these drawers, get all that dust out that has been in them, and uh, just do some final things. I also need to clean the front of my van. I struggle with that space in my vehicle. It's easy to keep things back here clean, but I always have a tendency of chucking things in the front. And if I buy bottled water or anything like that, it always seems to like lump itself on the floor. It's a ruckus, like everything just seems so dirty in here water toys and it doesn't help with all this stuff over there like uh, i always find that this space to be a little frustrating sorry it's messy up here mr cruzy tomorrow we're going to be back at john's place and just get some of these other cleaning projects finished in the van and catch up on some video editing and fingers crossed that my palette full of toys shows up tomorrow ah the hardest part about all this is I'm excited about it. If I wasn't excited about it, this would be like, whatever, it'll come when it comes in. But I am so pumped about getting this pallet full of toys for the van. On the note of toys, I've really had that ambulance, that 4x4 ambulance you guys seen. I've had that thing on my mind a lot today. It's been a big part of conversation between me and John at J5 Custom Vans. He's a 4x4 guy. I don't know anything about 4x4. So we were talking about that ambulance and some of the stuff it's got and 
how many kilometers it has and the type of engine and guys i'm seriously like seriously thinking about buying the ambulance as a project i just keep thinking zombie apocalypse van like fully like bug out crazy oh my gosh this is this insane this is insane i'm going insane am i going insane is this what's happening is i'm going i'm going insane i, I am i'm going insane i'm going insane i'm going insane why are you talking about buying an ambulance are you are you kidding me <laughs> oh, i love my home so don't get this twisted it's not like I want to get rid of this and move into the ambulance. That's not the case. Because if I were to ever buy and build another project, that thing would take me at least a year or two years to finish. When you talk about buying an ambulance, are you being insane? <laughs> I think I've lost it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>